Hey, boys and girls, welcome back to Children's Worship. I'm Miss Betsy. This is Culpepper UMC Children's Worship. Today is the fourth Sunday of the month. I can't believe our month is about gone. So I want to remind you, our theme all month long is reconnect, build the bridge. And if you think about a bridge, it takes work and effort to build. And really, if you really think about a bridge, it has to be done well so it doesn't fall down. So you and I are supposed to be bridge builders, making peace. Our life application all month long is peace, proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. That's so hard to do. It's easy to get caught up in an argument and want to be the winner, isn't it? I know it is for me sometimes. So peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Keep that in mind all month long. Well, not just all month long. That needs to be a life application, something we do all the time. Our verse for the month is Romans 14, 19. So let us do all we can to live in peace. And let us work hard to build one another up. Romans 14, 19. That is our memory verse. It is a very good verse for us to learn. God's word is so important to put in our hearts, to hide in our hearts. And we do that by memorizing it, learning it. So if you memorize this verse, we have a prize for you. So I want to hear from you. Again, that is so let us do all we can to live in peace. And let us work hard to build one another up. Romans 14, 19. Work hard to build one another up. Make an effort. Kind of like building that bridge. So today's Bible story is the peacemaker. It's about Abigail. And Abigail intervened, helped out her husband, took care of David. I'll share that story with you in just a few minutes. Right now, we're going to worship. So let's sing this song and worship together. I don't want to fight like this anymore. I don't want our words to start a war. I'll take a step back so we can try.
Oh, isn't that a great song? Don't forget, it is so important to lay down those differences and work together to be friends and to encourage one another. I love that song. I love the way they, those dance moves and how they just kind of drive it all home. You know, isn't that neat? Okay, so right now we are going to watch Discovery, an awesome video, and then we'll go right in to our Bible story. I'll see you back in a little bit. Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey guys, I'm Caleb, and I'm inviting you on a grand journey into my Bible. Stroll down the aisles of this library and you'll find 66 separate books. These are God's words written down by people who followed him over hundreds of years. I'm done. <laughs> every book, every chapter, every verse is like a puzzle piece. They all fit together to form the incredible story of how God created us and how we turned our backs on him. Instead of leaving us on our own though, God carried out the greatest rescue plan ever. He made a way for us to be with him forever, no matter what we've done. He made peace with us. And I have four stories right here to show what peace can look like. We start off with the entire Bible. <laughs> Not even kidding. <laughs> but we get the highlights right here in Colossians 1. God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. That's because of what Christ has done. God made peace through Christ's blood by his death on the cross. True peace begins and ends with God. Now we're heading two chapters over for the next step. Here, the Apostle Paul explains that because God made peace with us, you've got a mission, should you choose to accept it. Let the peace that Christ gives rule in your hearts. As parts of one body, you were appointed to live in peace and be thankful. God made peace with us so we can make peace with others. Now let's head back to Genesis to take a different look at peace. God has blessed Isaac with a good crop and large flocks and herds, but the nearby Philistines feel threatened. They're so fearful, they fill up Isaac's wells with dirt. That leaves Isaac with a tough choice, fling mud back in their faces or refuse to play dirty and walk away. Let's wrap up in the book of 1 Samuel. Here, David and his men have been protecting the flocks of a rich man named Nabal. But when David asks if they can share in the sheep shearing feast, Nabal just sneers. David is ready to flip his lid. He marches out with 400 men to face Nabal. That's when Nabal's wife, Abigail, hears what's going on. She comes up with her own peace offering and it's pretty sweet. True peace takes hard work and creativity. It takes proving you care more about others than about winning. And I can't wait to see how it plays out in you and in me. Oh, wasn't that a good video? Okay, so the Bible story. 
Our Bible story is taken from 1 Samuel 25, and we're learning about King David. King David. So King David was a pretty famous guy. He was chosen to be the next king of Israel when he was just a young man. He was watching the flocks of sheep, and God sent Samuel to Jesse's house to pick out the next king, and he saw all of his older brothers. Samuel saw all of his older brothers, and God said, nope, nope. And finally there was David, and he had him anointed as king. But when he was anointed king, there was already a king in place. King Saul was still ruling over Israel. Saul was jealous because David won lots of battles and he was really popular with people. So Saul kept trying to capture David and to hurt David. As a result, David and his men sp spent most of their time running running from King Saul. So they were kind of living on the run. They had to move around a lot and hide from King Saul and from his armies. It wasn't easy for David, but if he wanted to stay alive long enough to become king, he had to stay on the run from King Saul. So one day, David and his men went down to the desert of Paran. They traveled near the land of a wealthy man named Nabal, or Nab Nabal, I'm pretty sure you say. So, yes, he's another villain in the story. Nabal was very rude and mean, but he had a very wise and, and intelligent wife named Abigail. So at first, Nabal's servants weren't sure what to think about David and his men. Nabal's servants didn't know if they could trust them. But David's men didn't do anything mean. They didn't steal from them. In fact, David protected Nabal's shepherds from harm. They were camped out near Nabal's area, his land and his home, and he, they protected Nabal and protected his men and protected his sheep. So they actually were a blessing to Nabal. So at a certain time of year, sheep got a haircut. They call it sheep shearing time. So during that time, David asked 10 of his men to go and speak to Nabal and give him a friendly hello. And David told them, and this is, you can find this in 1 Samuel 25 verses 5 and 6. David said, go up to Nabal at Carmel. Greet him for me. Say to him, may you live a long time. May everything go well with you and your family, and many things go well with everything that belongs to you. In other words, David was giving him a blessing. David also told the men to remind Nabal that they had been in that they had been good to his shepherds and to his sheep. They had taken care of them. David said this. He said, "When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well. The whole time they were at Carmel, nothing that belonged to them was stolen." Ask your own servants. They'll tell you. We've come to you now at a happy time of the year. Please be kind to my men. Please give me and my men anything you can find for us. That seems like a pretty normal thing to ask, right? I mean, David was just hoping Nabal would share some snacks while they were all celebrating. But Nabal said no. That's right. He's, can you believe it? David and his men had showed plenty of kindness to Nabal, but Nabal had refused to give them any food in return. When David's men returned and told David what Nabal had said, David was angry. About 400 men went with David looking for a fight. Nabal's servants could tell that this wasn't looking good. So a servant warned Nabal's wife, Abigail, about what Nabal had done. A Abigail knew that she had to do something to help. Maybe if she made a gift for David, she could convince him to turn back instead of going after Nabal. Abigail didn't waste any time. She gathered supplies and loaded them on donkeys. She gathered bread, cakes, wheat, and grains, 
And she told the servants to go ahead to David and to his men and that she would follow them. When Abigail finally saw David and his men, they were marching through a mountain valley. She could tell that David was very angry. It was obvious. Oh, Abigail got off of her donkey and bowed before David. She then took the blame on herself. That's right. She said, and this is 1 Samuel 25, verses 25 and 26. She said, please don't pay any attention to that evil man, Nabal. His name means foolish person. And that's exactly what he has been. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see the men you sent. Sir, the Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. He has kept you from using your own hands to get even. So may what's about to happen to Nabal happen to all of your enemies. May it happen to everyone who wants to harm you. And may it happen just as surely as the Lord your God and you are alive. Everyone was watching what David would do. Nabal had insulted him, but Abigail showed honor to him. Would that be enough to keep the peace? Abigail continued, The Lord your God will certainly give you and your family line a kingdom that will last. That's because you fight the Lord's battles, and David did. The Lord will do for you every good thing he promised to do. He'll appoint you ruler over Israel. When that happens, you won't have this heavy load on your mind. You won't have to worry about how you killed people without any reason. You won't have to worry about how you got even. The Lord your God will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Abigail stood there waiting to see what David would say. After a moment, David smiled. And he said, Give praise to the Lord. He is the God of Israel. He has sent you today to find me. May the Lord bless you for what you have done. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. Abigail was a hero. And he's, Abigail had made a stand. She had saved the day. David accepted Abigail's gifts and told her to go home in peace. In the end, Nabal died. He paid a high price for his foolish and angry response to David. But David didn't kill him. And God blessed Abigail. She had chosen to humble herself and do the hard work of making peace. Abigail understood that you should show you care about others by being part of the solution. That happens to be our bottom line today. You can show you care about others by being part of the solution. Abigail wasn't the one who caused the problem. She wasn't involved in the fight, but she got involved so that she could make peace. She chose to be part of the solution. You and I have opportunities all around us to stand up and be part of the solution. Sometimes it's at home, sometimes it's at school, sometimes it's in your neighborhood or on the playground or whatever. So you and I have a choice. We can be part of the solution. You can show you care about others by being part of the solution. Let's pray. Oh God, thank you for the story of Abigail and for the the reminder that we can be part of the solution. You can use us to make peace, even if we're not the ones who have an argument to begin with. Help us look for ways that we can make peace and show the people in our lives that we care about them. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's been a fun day, hasn't it? There's a lot to learn, though. It's kind of a hard day, even when it's a fun day. I'm sure that you have had times when you've had an opportunity to be part of an argument or when you have seen other people arguing and you've had an opportunity to be part of the solution. So pray, this, pray with me this whole month and from now on that you can see ways to be part of the solution, that you can remember how important it is to make peace, to be a peacemaker, like Abigail did. 
We've had a great, we had a great video, just a reminder of all that we've learned all month long. We had that great song. I hope you've just memorized those words. I hope you'll go back and watch these videos again and watch the at least the song and, and some of the videos that are on there. And just remember how important it is to reconnect, build the bridge. I hope you've had a good month with this and I want to hear from you. Let me hear how you're doing. Let me hear what God's doing in your heart, okay? I can't wait to hear from you. Have a good week. Bye.